Hello and welcome to Nick Grit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video I'm going to show you a kind of an addendum of my last pumpkin video. So I've already made this base pumpkin based off of a video that I posted last year but my normal pumpkin is similar to my turtle pumpkin in that it usually has the stem, this leaf, and this little twine piece. So if you're interested in that Links will be down below, but you can, you can make it looking like this. But what I wanted to do was show how to turn it into a little witchy pumpkin. That tutorial has how to make it in three separate sizes. This is a small, this is a large, and there's a middle in between one as well. But this one will go on any and all of those pumpkins. So if you're interested in learning how to turn your base pumpkin without the added parts from the previous video into this cute little witchy pumpkin, then stay tuned. There's both a right and left handed component of this video. So if you're interested in the opposite hand than what you're seeing, my crochet hook will be in the hand of which video you're watching. So that is either right handed or left handed. So if you need to go to the other one, links again are down below. Let's go ahead and get started with what you will need. All right, so for this project, you will need to already have a base done. I did it in large just because I thought that this would look better with our size large pumpkin, but I also wanted to show what it would look like on the small pumpkin. I'm pretty sure this is the small and not the medium, but I wanted to show what it looks like. So I'm gonna be doing it on this. And for this, I ended up using Stitch Studio by Nicole. I'm pretty sure this was, I'm not entirely sure if this is a brand that's out there anymore. It's a worsted weight yarn that's a size four, but I'm pretty sure Studio, I, I was told this, that I, I'm, this is not confirmed, but when AC Moore was bought out by Michaels, they bought the Stitch Studio by Nicole, but I've never seen Stitch Studio by Nicole at the Michaels now, so I'm not 100% sure, but I really like it because it is this really pretty heathered tone, and I've been using it because my mom, when AC Moore went out of business, gifted me so many skeins of this because usually it's $9.99 each, but my mom ended up getting a crazy deal where it was like a dollar each when they were going out of business. So when AC Moore was going out of business and being sold or whatever. So she got me so many of these skeins, like probably about $100 worth and they were a dollar each. So I have a ton of them. And because I have a ton of them, I have a ton of yarn scraps. And that's what I actually stuffed this pumpkin with. I find that it makes a heavier pumpkin and if you're gonna be having these set out somewhere and you don't want it to just fly away, you could use polyfill, but because I've been making a ton of granny square blankets with this Stitch Studio, I just filled my pumpkin with all of the yarn ends. Like uh, whenever you cut off your tails from after sewing, that's essentially what I did. I have an entire jar filled with them and I'm hopefully I'll be putting some B-roll of that right here, but I keep a jar full of all my yarn ends that I can use for stuffing pumpkins for the fall season or whatever else I can think of it for. It's a really good way to repurpose some of your yarn ends because I always feel like I waste a lot of my tails. So I have used my yarn tails. I did not use any of this polyfill, but if you need to, you can. I'm using a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is my Burl's crochet hook. I love this one. It's the Odyssey line. Very pretty, pretty. I'm also using a darning needle. And for this, in order to achieve this kind of witchy bendy look, I ended up using some floral kind of twiny twig line things. These ones are like the ones that are covered in fabric. You could also easily use some doll wire. This one's sculpting and armature wire, but I find that this is probably way cheaper and honestly more flexible and easier to use for our purposes here. So I'm going to be using these in this video because I have a ton of them and one goes a long way inside one of those. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is the way Henrietta has to hold that in order for this whole thing to work. So essentially what you're going to want to have is two tones of the same type of yarn. If you have a size four worsted weight, it'll work. I just really like using heathered yarns when it comes to my pumpkins. I think it looks a lot more fall-esque and I don't think we use enough navies and dark blues in the fall. So that's why I'm using this one and I want it to pop. So with this one, I did the cream and the brown. But for this one, I'm going to do the navy blue. And because I wanted you guys to be able to see the yarn as I work with it, uh, I'm going to be using this nice cream tone that I used on the base there. And that's going to be my stem for this navy blue. I'm really excited. So here, it's really easy to start. I'm going to create actually a really long tail because I hide it inside of my work here. I make a good 12 inch long tail. 
Again, all tails end up inside the tail bin and used for future pumpkins. So it's, you know, it's all good. So here we're gonna take our yarn, make a slip knot and add it onto our crochet hook. And what I like to do here is we're going to just make our magic ring in the way that I do that is the same way that I did for the pumpkin. We're going to chain two, so one, two, and we're gonna go inside our first chain. So the second one from our hook and we're going to put six single crochet inside of it. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll find that it might open up like so. And what we're gonna do is kind of pull on it just a little bit and it's fine. Move our tail this way so it's a little less in the way. And we're gonna start working in the round. I'm gonna pull that a little bit tighter. And the way that I do that is essentially for 20 rounds total, we are only going to maintain those six stitches while working in the round. So instead of doing any kind of increases, we're just gonna be making a tube that goes down and down and down and down and down until we get to the point where we need to increase. And so that was row one with our magic ring and our increase. And for rows two through 20, we're going to maintain those six stitches. And so that's gonna be kind of hard. And you also might notice that your work tries to bend in on itself and you kind of just wanna correct it from doing that. We're just gonna go around and see how it's kind of wanting to bend inward like that kind of correct it and force it to not to just not not do that four five six and this is why i make such a long tail because while i tug there to try to keep it from falling apart. I'm gonna take my long tail and pull it through that stitch like so. And I'm going to continue on for 20 rounds total. So now we're on row three. We're gonna keep going until we get to row 20 of just single crocheting around and I'm gonna keep moving my tail forward every single time. That way my start is really far away from my beginning and if it does come undone for whatever reason I can always fix it later but I don't think I should have that be an issue. We're gonna go around here, two, three, four, Ooh, splitting our yarn, four, five, and six. Moving our tail forward, I'm going to go off camera after pushing this tail forward, and we're gonna do all 20 rounds, and then I'll show you how I make it bendy, and how I do the rest of the increases, and how I make it look kind of bumpy on the edges here. Be right back as soon as I get all 20 rounds of us just going around for six stitches. Okay, so we have done our um, 20 rounds of round. We've gone from one through 20, and now we're gonna do a little bit of expanding to create this nice, cute little uh, witchy bottom as well. I think it kind of looks like it's uh, spiky and cute and I like it a lot. So how we do that is we're gonna actually start doing some increases. I'm gonna try my best to show it. So here is the start of our round and we're going to start by on round 21, we're going to single crochet one and then increase. So we're gonna put two stitches inside of our next stitch. One and then increase. One and then increase the next stitch and then one and increase. So that was only a repetition of three times. You should now have nine stitches on your piece. I'm gonna move my tail forward once more. I like that my tail goes down the entire stem. That way it, it's, it's completely hidden and you don't have an issue with it later. So I'm gonna pull that through, treat it as if it is a piece of my work there. And now we're on row 22, where we're gonna be going from nine to 12. And the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one, increase, and then single crochet one. We're gonna be staggering our increases. So one, increase one, one, increase, 
one, and then this is our last repetition, one, increase, one. So that way there are two single crochets between our increases and they just aren't lining up with the increases from our previous round. I think that looks better in my opinion. So now we have 12 stitches on our work and what we're going to do for our final round of this is we're going to do kind of a cutesy thing. I really like how this looks. I'm working through the front loop only but it actually doesn't super duper matter. This is a repetition of six times and what we're going to do is single crochet one, chain three, so one, two, three. We did the same thing for our leaf on our last pumpkin. We're going to go and take our hook and go into the very first chain that you made, slip stitch, and then do another single crochet. This creates this nice little kind of bump. So single crochet one, one, two, three, go into the first right there, slip stitch, and then single crochet. That way you kind of have this cute little ridge that's being formed here, and I really like that. So one, we're going to do this for a total of six times, two, three, go inside the first, slip stitch, and a single crochet. We're going to continue this all the way around. One, two, three. Now we're on our last repetition, and what I like to do here is we're going to do again our one, two, three piece, go into the first, we're going to then single crochet the one, and then we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of our previous round, essentially. I'm going to create another little it's knot there. And what I like to do is we're going to take and cut a decently long tail ish about like well that's actually very decently long that's about 12 inches but what i like to do here is a i'm going to take my old tail and pull that out i don't need that anymore it's done i'm going to cut that so that it's not in the way for later move that over there and i think because for some reason i don't know if my gauge or my tensioning is a little bit off i'm having a hard time putting the wire inside so if you're, you're you knit too tightly it might it might be a little bit hard but i am going to try out the doll wire and see if maybe twisting it around a bunch will maybe make this a bit more structurally sound i don't know if that makes any sense but we're going to try to put this inside i find that it is easier the straighter it is trying to go into this so i'm having a hard time i'm just kind of like wiggling it wiggling it oh actually that wasn't hard that time okay just to you know prove myself wrong i did it right on the first time on that one okay camera magic i'll take it and i try to push it up as far up as I can, and I actually think I like the doll wire more now that I've, I, I'm probably backpedaling on what I said, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and I've got it all the way up here, and you can bend it whatever angles you want, however crooked you want it to be, I think that looks great, I actually straight up just took some scissors, and it's cut with scissors, wait a second, but now, that's going to be a little bit of a pokey bit if you want to try to like do something with that you're free to i'm gonna save these for later but what we're gonna do now that i have my wire inside i wanted it to be just a little bit crooked but not like obscenely so i think that's super duper cute i think everything is super duper cute let's be real um let's put our tail i wanted it to be right there for the most part but i'm gonna take my tail and i'm gonna try to line up my bumps so that they are opposite of the little quadrants that I made in the pumpkin and I'm just gonna kind of stab it through itself and then through the pumpkin might take a little bit of wiggling because it is harder to get a darning needle through all the tail ends there we go I'm gonna pull that through kind of just let that sit there and what I'm going to do from here 
is I'm actually going to take hot glue and hot glue this on. So I put that tail there for a reason so that I can hide it later. But I'm going to go and take some hot glue and put it on the tip of those so that they don't pokey poke. And then I'm going to take it and kind of raise it up on each one of these little bumps. And I'm going to press it and make it so that he sticks like so. So I'm going to go off camera real quick and I'm going to go hot glue that. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone and I've hot glued this on. And one thing that I will say is that whenever I had it upside down, I made sure to put a lot more hot glue in the center around where the wire is. I do think that this wire actually worked significantly better. And I think this looks super duper cute. I made sure to put the hot glue around it. That way when it goes all congealed, it seems like this is a lot more structurally sound than this one, which just wants to go everywhere. So definitely make sure, I would definitely use the hot glue trick with this. And I still haven't taken off my little uh, piece from here. I pulled it as tight as I can inside there. And then I'm just going to cut this. Be sure to get the printable PDF for this. There will be one linked down below. It is free for the first week. And then after that, it goes to $3. I love how this turned out. It looks super cute. And I'm really pleased with how this looks. I think that this wire, the doll wire, definitely works a lot better. Sculpting an armature wire. I think I got this at Michael's over in the um, art section, like sculpting area. So I'm sure a doll wire or even these would work as well. I think the big thing is that this is a bit thicker, so it was harder to get into the stem. But I do think that doing the hot glue trick would make a much more structurally sound, um, as I knock over everything, much more structurally sound uh, pumpkin, basically. Both are cute, but I definitely think I like this one a bit more because it seems like it's a little less wobbly. And by a little less, I mean significantly. All right, so next week, we're gonna be working on another set of our fruit whales and fruit turtles. So I'm gonna be working on the dragon fruit. And then let me know if you would like to see, after that, I've already got most of the dragon fruit tutorial done, but let me know if you'd like to see the blueberry next or the watermelon. I have a feeling it's gonna be watermelon, but this blueberry has a big place in my heart and I think they're both very, very cute. This one's actually just very similar to the pumpkin, so I think I might do the blueberry, but it all depends on what people say down in the comments and what they would like to see. If you like spooky tutorials, I do have a bunch of Halloween themed amigurumi, which I have a playlist for that. Again, I will link that down below. Let me know how this turns out for you. And if you do end up downloading the pattern, give me a comment down below and let me know what you think about it. It does, uh, I love feedback and I do like hearing from people about what they think about the pattern itself and where they think things could be a little bit more clear or whether or not they just straight up like the pattern. I don't know. Thank you for watching this video. And before we go, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, no pressure, you can go to patreon.com slash knit. But if you also just wanna support the channel, you can just give a nice free subscribe if you're interested in being subscribed to this kind of content. Uh, on Patreon, we have free patterns, early access tutorials, and other stuff like that. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. Until next time, guys. Bye!